Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you every week for the past 15 years on Bright House Cable Network. We are a community-based news show, no teleprompters. We talk the talk and do the walk. Jose Miranda, co-host, Al Mortero, guest host, and Greg Perkins, co-host. How you doing, guys? Great. Hello, how are you? Okay, so let's start off. The news this past uh, few days about Hillary Clinton and a new email scandal. I know the one. Do you know the one? Okay, so Greg, you want to take a shot at that? Do you know what's going on? You know what's going on. <laughs> I know what's going on. <laughs> it's emails. I mean, how long are you guys going to continue to dig? Yeah, this but you want to know something? Emails. Well, until she divulges the fact. The new the new thing is <clears throat> is that now she had another email account which she never disclosed. Allegedly. No, they're not saying it allegedly. They're saying that they have the documentation of a new email account. Right. And now they, they want to forward. see those emails. They haven't put that because, forward. Because, let me, let me finish my statement. I know you're going to defend her and all that. But I'm, yeah. I, this is New York Times. The New York Times released this story several days ago. The New York Times said that she has a new email account, that that email account was never disclosed legally, which she was supposed to disclose to her attorney. She never said anything about it because the original email account was hacked. So she created another one, okay? So I guess the Secret Service guys that were guarding the server didn't do their job. What do you think? Yeah, but what, okay. you, what, what are you so looking for in the emails, Danny? What are what, you looking for? What we're looking for is, number one, why is she using a personal email account to conduct State Department business You're assuming. with foreign countries? Okay? You're assuming I'm only saying what the New York Times said. Okay. You're so they're assuming too. They're, they're, they are assuming well, too. Well, I don't know. It's a, a Democratic degree. newspaper. Okay. Okay, so let's move so on. Came okay, let's move on. A Republican all I'm saying, paper be all better? I, all I'm saying is what was reported. I want to know what's in a sock drawer. I want to know too, okay. because maybe there's something uh, in there. I want to know what's going Besides on. Besides the $25 million okay. that she made. I want to know since what's in, 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 in the sock drawer. For 2014, this is a woman who claims that she's from the people, I want that to she know. is middle class, okay? Right. Well, she and she knocked down class, 25 class, million. Middle class, yes. Yeah. Before they became wealthy now. Because very she, wealthy. She was, well, she wasn't always wealthy. Though. So now I know. She, made, she and her so husband are you became very wealth? wealthy. You are against wealth? I'm Good not point. against wealth. Oh I'm, I'm now saying that You're Hillary Republican. Clinton... You love wealth. Hillary Clinton has now surpassed Mitt Romney in wealth. And your point and is And everybody what? jumped on his case because he had a wealth of $400 million and the Clintons have surpassed that during the no, time that they she jumped was on, They State. jumped on him because he, he his business was about buying companies and kicking people oh, out. Oh, I see. Okay. And Hillary and Clinton's so, and what, business what is, is selling influence no? because she doesn't manufacture anything. Okay, and what okay. was that? So like she, all we got to do is say everybody out there, pick up a copy of the New York Times, go to the New York Times website if you want to know what the New York Times said. It's a Democratic newspaper. And please start looking into Senator right. Elizabeth Warren as an alternate candidate for the, re, for the Democratic Party for President of the United States. And all you this people is a who woman want to wear that those deserves, heads, excuse me, this is a woman who deserves your attention. Why, you, you think, you, you in the show you said, and what? let me finish, you oh, in no, the no, show no, no. said, you yourself said, that you would vote I for said Elizabeth if Warren. That came to the, if that came to the point, then she would be a good, decent candidate. Okay, no, and that's I said, not what I you said. said. And I said I didn't, I wouldn't mind voting for her. No, you okay. said that you would vote for no, her. No, after you over. nagged the crap out of me. Hey, what's the matter? You're not a big boy. You can't mm -hmm. handle it. I was looking. You know what? I was looking Let's at your point. Let's rerun what he said. We'll do the clip. <laughs> what he said that he's denying. I was looking One, two, at your three. Point. Here's the clip. Who would you? No, I'm asking. Who would you vote for? I think they're both viable. Who would you vote for? I don't. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I tend to want to look at. Why some did you of the tell foreign... me off camera that you would vote for Elizabeth Warren, and on camera you're telling me you wouldn't? Oh, is that the same reason that you said there's no Republicans that's going to win the nomination? I don't care. I don't care about the Republicans <laughs> right now. I really don't care. We're talking about the Democrats. <laughs> We're talking about Democrats. All I'm saying is. I listen. I, I, I think Elizabeth is probably the better orator and uh, integrity wise. Person Thank you. <laughs> All right. You got it? This is what he said. All right. Let's go on to the next subject. Look for the New York Times and let's start looking for Warren as an alternate candidate. All right. Let's talk about Jade Helm. Okay. You got to talk about Jade Helm? I, I think it's just kind of ridiculous to think that uh, Texas is paranoid about the U.S. military conducting operations that may be necessary to help defend us. Why would we try to impose martial law on our own citizens? Well, why would they call it an exercise of martial law? 
Why would they call an exercise to protect American citizens an exercise of practicing martial law? Why would they do that? That's stupid. Why don't they just say it's a military exercise to protect in case of civil unrest? Why don't they do that? that but they use the word martial law, instituting martial law that in the description. That wasn't the context of what they're doing. That, that training is because of the, uh, the atmosphere, the ground, um, things that are very similar to countries mm -hmm. that we, we are currently at war right. with. And we do create martial laws in those countries in order to control what's going on. So th I believe that's the really crux of it. Plus, we're using special forces. So why don't they do it in, in, in one isolated geographic stone area instead of multiple states? But what's also interesting about that situation is that at the same time, the FBI director announced that there are possibly thousands of ISIS operators in the United States waiting to push the button. Now, he made that statement a week ago on C-SPAN. That was a recent, okay? recent thing. It has so, nothing to do with the exercise. Well, it, it has nothing to, How do you do that? How do you oh, know you're a Republican. How do you I'm know sorry. that? I, I, my bad. How do you know that? You're a Republican. No, but how do you know that? Do you have a file, inside information from the FBI? You have access to the computers of the FBI? They it says are, it has nothing to do. They All are I'm saying assuming, is, based, based on uh, computer chatter, on uh, some arrest right. that they made, and they're making an assumption. Just like there are You're thousands... You're saying the FBI is making an assumption? I'm the saying, FBI director is making an I'm assumption? I'm saying that, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to sell lemons, so you say the lemon fields are, are, are becoming decayed. So that's what I'm saying. And the last two people who represented ISIS, right, that tried to attack us here in the United States, mm -hmm. I believe that our cops took care of them very swiftly. No, they took care of them very swiftly. Also, during Jade Helm, this is all a cluster. It's like puzzle parts. Now, they may be related, they may not be related. I don't know. I'm looking at different puzzle parts. Number one, you got Jade Helm going for several months beginning in July. Then you have the ISIS threat, which the FBI came and astounded members of the Congress who actually were flabbergasted that the director of the FBI would say, we have thousands of operatives that come over the Mexican border who are plants here and waiting. That's number two. And then, number three, is the call for the nationalization of police departments under the executive branch of the federal government. Okay, who That's number that? three. Now, now, you, now, you, now you're throwing the ball over that to the police and no, I'm saying that there's forming a the brown shirts. No, that's what I'm okay. saying. There's how no you, question. If you, you nationalize, I'm, listen, are you asking me a question? I'll answer. If you nationalize the police department, yeah. you're going down the same road that every dictatorship in this country did. The first in the world. The first thing they I'm did sorry, was what to the, nationalize What other police. dictatorship do have we had in this country? No, I'm saying the world. Okay. The world. So you think Hitler's coming back? No, I'm not, I don't think Hitler's coming back. Maybe a different form, a oh. more modernized form. So Obama. Okay. <laughs> if you, That's all if you take, if you're you saying take, the President of the United States no, wants to be I'm, a dictator. No, I'm saying the President of the United States wants to nationalize the police department. Oh. And today, he called for to take away from all the police departments all wow. classifications of equipment that are military. Yeah, but so we don't need those things. He well, wants to strip. Remember, Danny, yeah. we, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. We don't need those. We have a plan to do that, but, right. I mean, but on one side right. you're saying, wait a second. On one side you're saying we have to send in the military to practice martial law, right? So we're sending in troops into our cities, and then on the other side you're saying we're taking away the equipment from the police department. Welcome to the National Enquirer. Well, Fin please finish. <laughs> Go ahead. What I was going to say it is that one thing is what he's planning, assuming that that's his intention. Whose intention? The president. I don't say that that's his intention. It could be somebody else. But, but I mean, it, it doesn't require one person to make the, the determination. It's, you know. Yes, it requires so having the attorney general. It requires having certain senators and congressmen. So who's to say that they're going to agree to that, that it's going to be I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is facts. That's all I'm saying. Facts. The military is practicing martial law in certain states in the United States that happen to be Republican states. Number two, the FBI came out and said there are thousands of operatives that, from ISIS. And number three, the police are being nationalized. There's a movement to nationalize the police department and take away their equipment, their big equipment. That's all I'm saying. And okay, let's go on to the next of, subject. You can't. Let's go on to the next subject. The de Blasio thing, because I think the de Blasio thing is very important from the point of view of democratic politics, that what's going on in the United States. First, there's the trade agreement, okay, that de Blasio put together an amazing coalition, and he stepped out of New York City, went to Washington, and pulled together unions, 
minority organizations, Hispanic and black, Congress people from both sides of the aisle who are black and Hispanic, mm -hmm. and he put them all together to come out with a document that called for possibly changing the Constitution of the United States to include economic equality, okay? They called for economic equality. Mm -hmm. They also called for the cancellation of any trade agreement that would send contracts and jobs outside the United States. The Republicans will never go for it. I don't know. The, no, actually, I don't know. some parts of they are. They're going for the uh, trade agreement because yeah. Republicans like money. And I have got to get. But a there's a lot of Democrats. The type of magazines that you're reading. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. Start with the New York Times okay, today. Okay, we'll start New Let, York Times. When we get off the set, pull up the New York Times, and that'll okay. we'll talk about Clinton. All right. Okay. Okay. You know what it is? Is I'm just doing a little homework. That's okay, all. Okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Can, we, can we say that Blasio is is now, the, crooning himself for vice president? I think that okay, I think that De Blasio also mentioned Elizabeth Warren yes. in this scenario. Yeah. So I absolutely. think there's a coalition going with De Blasio, New York, and Elizabeth De Blasio Warren. De Blasio is not going to make vice president. I don't that's, know. That's I don't the, know. That's he's not going. Okay. To. Well, I don't know. He's, he's weak. I don't know. He's but weak I in he's New York. Be very influential though. You know, I, I I mean, he could be a cabinet yeah. member. They could well. Somebody else can continue his legacy. Mm. You know, but he's you know, not in but something. But what he mm. did was was really unprecedented. He really did something unprecedented. And he for did the, that with the, the progressive Department coalition. Too. They're really happy about him in New York. Well, yeah, but I, those are all good things, Danny. I mean, do you find anything wrong with what he's proposing? I. You want to know something? It's there's nothing wrong with what he's proposing. Okay. But the methodology of how he does it has to be watched very carefully. Okay. That you have to watch, like anything. Good ideas, great intentions, but then as they put them into implementation, they're compromises. And the compromises are where they have to be careful. But I think the guy did an amazing job to pull all these people together. Sure. I mean, I was like, So you're wow. just impressed by his, is the way he was able to coordinate I, that. I was, Not necessarily about what he's trying to do. No, I was impressed by what he's trying to do and the people that jumped on board with him. Yeah, but those are all good policies, though. They are. Yeah. They are. But Which that's are not going to be implemented. That's something that I don't know. Nobody's going to follow that. I'm telling you, your people won't well, go. Well, listen, I, I don't know if they're going to follow or not. To me, it makes logic. What they're doing okay. is they want jobs. They want a higher minimum wage. They want certain social benefits, like sick leave, you know, for employees. I mean, this is all logical stuff. Right. Yeah. Sure. And this is something that Hillary minimum, Clinton should have done. This would be if minimum, Hillary Clinton if minimum, minimum wage is $15 a spot, then I'm talking. Then we're, we're in business. Listen, that's another subject. And we, if we have a couple of minutes left, we only have a minute left. But this is something that Hillary Clinton should have pulled off. If Hillary Clinton would have pulled this meeting off, this conference mm -hmm. off, she would have been like, Yes, Hillary, we're for you. No, you well, wouldn't. I'll no, you wouldn't. In email format, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we only have a minute left. Minimum wage. If my take is, you know, and I know that if you do a minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. When you go to McDonald's, and who goes to McDonald's, and who goes to all these low-end food stuff? Poor people. So when you go to McDonald's, we're trying, to stop, stop, we're trying to stop poor people. Did you know that? No, we're not trying to. Stop, I'm just yeah, we're pointing, trying to stop poor people. Will you stop interrupting something? Put, you put your hat on. Minimum put your, wage. Put your pointy hat on. Listen, okay. I'm minimum. Hear what let's go. Let's, let's go another thirty. Minimum <laughs> wage at fifteen dollars an hour. Okay, is going to increase the cost of every single product in the United States, including fast food. You, right now, fast food is 9 to $10 an hour. When you increase it by 30%, those burgers are going to go up. The sodas are going to go up. How are they not going to go up? They have to go up. So what's going to happen is it's a circle. You increase the price, you increase minimum wage, the prices are going to go up, and then the people are going to have to pay more for the products. So you it's think that simple. That it's best just to leave it how it is now? Yeah. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's best not to mandate minimum wage. Let the marketplace dictate. Let the unions dictate. Let the workers dictate. And you don't make want their unions deals either. Because maybe they're up You don't want unions no, either. You're a Republican. I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You're, you're, again, oh, you're there spouting, you go. Off. Oh, spouting off. What I'm saying is, is that there are products made that have the fat, okay? Like toothpaste. Toothpaste has the fat in it to increase minimum wage to $15 to $18 an hour, okay? But there are other products that don't. So you have to let that go into independent negotiation, not mandated by the government. Anyway, 
we're going to wrap this up and uh, thank you for being so obstinate, Jose. As usual, you know, you you know, you got you're now wearing the pointed hat instead of me. Uh, take, we're going to take a break and we're going to have Darren Soto, Senator Darren Soto, follow up right now. Don't go away. My name is Nin Marie Zapata and I am a Latina role model because I believe that you can overcome any circumstances that come in your way and be the best version of yourself. Hello, I'm Sandra Rivera and I'm a Latina role model. Whatever your struggles are in life, whatever you don't have or don't have access to, don't use that as an excuse for not pursuing your dreams and moving forward. Get out of your own way and get out of your comfort zone and you will be amazed at the growth that you will experience. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out TV. Brought to you each week on Bright House Channel 49 at 9.30 p.m. We've been on here forever, and you know we have old man time with us. Danny Ramos has been here since the beginning of time. So uh, we're talking politics as, as usual here. I have with me uh, Greg Perkins and the one and only Senator Darren Soto. What's up, brother? Thanks for having me on the show. How are you, man? Appreciate it. Good to Great to see you. Always good to see my hero, and I, I hear that hero worshiping is, is in for you because you just spanked the uh, Republican Party a little bit for breaking a few rules. Tell us about it. Well, it was the House Republicans. They adjourned over three days early, and uh, that was obviously a real upsetting situation because we have generally, even if we have our differences, pass a budget, get our bills done, and go home. And so they did that without letting the Senate know. And there's a rule in our Constitution that you cannot, you cannot terminate the session without agreement of both chambers right. uh, more than 72 hours. So basically, we as a Senate caucus agreed to sue on uh, Thursday at about 11 o'clock. We filed the suit at 3 o'clock, walked it over to the Supreme Court personally. And while a lot of people thought, oh, they're not going to respond, they're not going to take it seriously, an hour and a half later, they issued an order that they had to respond by 10 the next day, that Friday, uh, and then we had our reply at 12.30. And the court adopted the ruling that Pennsylvania and Alabama had already adopted, which is, yeah, you can't do that. That was unconstitutional. They wouldn't bring the House back because there was only five hours left in the session, but uh, it's a precedent for all future chambers that, you know, we're co-equal chambers and you can't just terminate the session. So. Right. It was a big win for us, obviously being a big part of the ground floor of that thing, big win for me as well. But at the end of the day, it's about Florida taxpayers, it's about Florida voters, and it's about making sure we get the job done in the future. Yeah, five hours, you couldn't do nothing. It, how many hours does it take to get you guys back together again? You guys go away on buses, planes, what are you doing? You know, they left. The whole Senate was there. We mm -hmm. stayed until Friday when the session was done with, but mm -hmm. they literally left. Just left Dodge. And ended on Tuesday without notice, middle of the day, right. and left Tallahassee. <laughs> and so a lot of them are as far as Key West and Pensacola. So the court said, you know, the remedy you're asking for is not feasible. But guess what? Yeah. The House unequivocally violated the Constitution. And let's just talk about it from from an average voter's perspective. They didn't do their job. Okay. Well, was was the, did they give any rationale? To do they do not agree with uh, the... Florida Health Exchange, which is bringing down federal dollars to expand, uh, not Medicaid because they'd get a private program, but they traditionally have called it Medicaid expansion, but mm -hmm. they'd get, we'd draw down the federal dollars and give 800,000 people health insurance mm -hmm. uh, by, as a result, and it would go from having a $2 billion deficit, because we'd be losing certain hospital funds this year anyway, mm -hmm. uh, to a $2 billion surplus, well, half a billion dollar surplus. Okay. So a lot of things are at issue here. They disagreed because they disagree with the president, and they didn't want that You're federal still money. That battle. Still fighting that battle. They're the they're the, they're the last folks on that island. Still fighting the battle. Yeah. And uh, to give you an idea, one third of our budget is federal funds. So we're already taking plenty of money from D.C. So to pick this yeah. out and to deny 800,000 people is unconscionable. But they disagree. They think it's an expansion of of Obamacare, they don't like it, right. but their, their Senate peers have totally jumped on board. So we have a bipartisan plan in the Senate. We pass it out with one no vote, with everybody on both sides of the aisle supporting it otherwise. In the House, the Democrats want to vote for it. In the House, moderate Republicans want to vote for it, but the core leadership team, the Speaker is very powerful in the House. Mm -hmm. He could basically take away people's committee, sh committee chairmanships right. and take away any budget, any bills you have. 
So they've just said, his leadership team has said, we're not doing a vote on this. And they felt so strongly about it that they left early without telling us. So I mean, it was a real immature way to end the session. And now with budget being the only responsibility we have not being done yet, we have to go back to a special session. But the Republicans did do a job. They, they actually worked very hard. It's my understanding they worked very diligently to pass the, uh, the uh, against women's issues, uh, uh, waiting uh, a day, 24 hours before right. they can get, receive abortion. So I know the social issue against women, they struggled, but they managed to go ahead and push that, that bill through. Right. They took a lot of their uh, more conservative social agenda, to oh. put it politely, yes. uh, forward. <laughs> um, but that bill, bottom line, is unconstitutional. <clears throat> uh, we've seen we have a right to privacy in the state of Florida in the Constitution. Right. We have more rights here in Florida than we do in other states because of that. And I got to see that bill in my Judiciary Committee. And so you have to show a compelling state interest. You have to bring up doctors and nurses and psychologists and all these people right. that say that women need 24 hours, they can't make this decision before, before that 24 hour waiting period. And not one doctor, not one nurse, not one professional of any sort came out to do that. So I, I think that will be found unconstitutional. But in general, they, they put, passed a few social issues, but they didn't deal with the big water policy issues to clean the springs in Lake Okeechobee and our Everglades. They didn't deal with the corrections issues. We had 200 deaths, of which several have already been deemed murders, and okay. they didn't pass that reform. We had a reform to allow for savings accounts for families with persons with disabilities to save up for their educational opportunities. Okay. That didn't pass. And a big important bill dealing with mental health to combine the Marchman and Baker Acts to have a unified system for substance abuse and mental health. Okay. These were one of many, but the worst of them was Deputy Scott Pine, who was a, it was a law enforcement officer here in Orange County, was killed in the line of duty. Right. And because he had the investment plan, his family got peanuts because he didn't choose the pension plan. But we want to make those equal. We want to help out the Pine family. Sure. So that bill allowed it to retroactively apply because Orange County Sheriff wasn't going to object to it. Normally you're not allowed to do that, but Sheriff Demings is 100% on board to allow the family to go under the new law, which would have allowed them to be treated like of his, as if he had the pension plan. Right. That bill died too. So the Pine family so they was went, failed they, let me get this by straight. the Florida the Republicans House. Republicans went against the police officers. The House Republicans, okay. the ones in the Senate, Good Republicans who did the right thing <laughs> and sided with us. The ones in the House did not do the right thing. What's a, what's a good and, Republican, bro? Well, the, the <laughs> Senator you Andy pat, Gardner. You, you pat him on the head. Senator, well, Senator Andy Gardner, our president, <laughs> helped put forward this plan that, uh, frankly, helps out with the Affordable Care Act right. in a conservative way because okay. he has a couple things. One, you have to have job training or have to be in school. You can't just be unemployed and not doing anything. Okay. Two, you have to pay a small premium, but something. You have to have some skin in the game. Right. And three, they're private plans. We're not expanding Medicaid. We're, so it's a conservative alternative we saw in Arkansas, we saw in Ohio, okay. we see in other states, Utah, that, that are conservative but have done the right thing. And, right. and I'm, I'm about compromise. And, right. and, and so that's why I, I give them the compliment and okay. uh, tip of the hat. Yeah, I've always been amazed at uh, those are all good things that you talked about. So, relative to the Democrats, do, do you think it's messaging that y'all aren't able to get your word out enough to talk about the good things that you're trying to do for the people so you could sort of change the balance? It just seems that there's just a Republican stronghold. Well, one of the things is that each House member has a very small district, mm -hmm. and it's one in the primary. So you have a, a group deciding who gets elected up there that are very conservative, obviously very against the president uh, and against the Affordable Care Act. And so that is what's driving this. In addition, it's the redistricting. Even though we pass those amendments, the fact of the matter is Florida is a very polarized state geographically. Mm -hmm. If you're in an urban or suburban yep. area, they tend to be Democratic or sometimes moderate Republican. But if you're in a rural area, it is a different world with yeah. a different yeah. mindset. Yeah. And, and I have no doubt that there are primary Republican voters cheering those guys on in the House because this is what they want. They want to stop government and to, and, to, and to prevent anything that is the president's legacy. And so that makes for very interesting makeups. Republican senators have broader districts, okay. more moderate. Okay. They're looking up these things from the numbers. Do you want to put us in a deficit? Right. Do you want to 
have these people go to the emergency room, 800,000 people who would normally get health care, and then the taxpayers have to pay for it. And the it. hospitals are going to miss out on a lot of that money. A lot of that. And so, and, and, and even drawing districts, it's very difficult to draw an even map in Florida because mm -hmm. so many of the districts are polarized one way or another. And then you have the Cuban Republicans in South Florida who are in the suburban area, but mm -hmm. because of historical issues with Castro and the like, they traditionally tend to be Republican. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of them in the Senate helped lead the charge. In fact, the bill to help this out was a Republican senator named Rene Garcia. But in the House, we can't seem to get uh, our, our Cubano hermanos to, to help us out right now. But yeah. I'm hopeful. Oh, okay. uh, a young senator that I know uh, wanted to uh, put a bill out there to pay teachers $50,000 a year. What happened uh, with that young senator? Well, you're referring to me, thank you. Not so young anymore, <laughs> 37 years of age, but uh, Try I, I put it forward, but it was more of a messaging bill so that I could do the good work in the budget. Because the budget did not pass, and now we're going into overtime, into a special right. session, we're going to be dealing with that in special session. When we had the Orange County delegation, which I was the chair of this past year, uh, our Classroom Teachers Association president said, you know, teachers should make a minimum of $40,000. But anybody who negotiates, like a good lawyer like me, mm -hmm. you don't go with your first negotiation. Right. So you put it up at 50, mm -hmm. you get the press, you get people excited about it, and then you go for what you're really going for. So my hope is we have teachers making as little as 36,000, 35,000 sure. in some of the rural areas. It's a through proviso language in the Senate with the help of Senator Bill Monford, who's a former superintendent, okay. uh, to get proviso language to start lifting up that minimum salary statewide, whether it be to 36 or 37. Right. Uh, in or Orange something. County, we already had great success because they had 37,000. We, we filed that bill right when the contract negotiations were going on. I personally lobbied the executive director, Scott Howitt, of the Orange County School Board, who was their key negotiator. And we got from 37 to 39. So we didn't get to 40, okay. but we're getting really close. But that saved you at home because your wife is a teacher too, right? My wife is a teacher as well, <laughs> full disclosure. But I can tell you this, you know, there isn't much better of an investment, particularly for our, the Hispanic community, for the African American community, than education. That is the key to upward mobility. And so this is something that goes beyond the interest of teachers. Right. You have a competitive salary, you maintain good teachers, you bring in new good ones, and then that helps our kids. So, yeah, I, well I, I, I think there's a lot of, uh, it, it seems, misinformation about teachers that they think that teachers they work they ten month, get work 10 months they get summers off but with these new standards this is hard work right these people aren't just coming to work and leaving at three o'clock if they want to do a good job right and we we have those standards set in stone and it drives the system in a way that our teachers and when we were in school were, were very different so you have math standards you have science standards you have reading standards you have writing standards you have the Florida standards uh, assessment with the FSA, which is what the FCAT used to be. It's all online. They have teacher merit pay. They have technology requirements now. But we did get a reprieve this year. One of the winner bills of the year was we had a bill to read roll back testing a little bit. Uh, end of course exams are state mandated exams that were mandated for every class, including apparently in Orange County, Italian handball. So even gym class and art. I'm and not and music, that. oh, that's that's out there as the quintessential example. So those are now going to go away, but the FSA is still here, teacher merit pay is here. Well, although we reduced the amount of the test from counting 50 percent to 33 oh. percent, so now we've de-emphasized the test. On not that what note, we need to do. On that note, Darren, we have to call it a night. But uh, I'll, I'll remember the Italian handball. I want to thank you for taking that time out, as always, my brother. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. I'm Jose Miranda. This has been Hispanic Speak Out TV.